are you ready for your next piece of the evergreen mystery quilt along this was part two that you can find on youtube now and let's move on to part three You can download part three of the free evergreen quilt along at Fat Quarter Shop. And all the patterns are there for the previous parts if you're just now joining. I'm sewing my quilt with Favorite Things by Sherry and Chelsea by Moda Fabrics. And I love how all the pinks, reds, grays, and greens are really building the tree with all the gifts. Subscribe to keep up with the rest of this quilt along and let's get sewing. So on part three, we've got our background fabric, our tree print, our accent print, and the prints we're using from our layer cake. So we're gonna go to page two and start with the very first step, and this is square and a square. So these finish at three inch and are unfinished at three. So if you want, you can use the three inch square and a square foundation paper by It's So Emma to get really accurate blocks and you have enough fabric to do this way or the traditional way. So I'm gonna show you the traditional way since not everybody has that paper. We're gonna take one fabric E from each print for this step. So you've got one pink, one white, and one plaid. And I'm just gonna start with making this one. I'm just gonna show you how to make one. You're gonna take your fabric E squares and for each one you need four. I'm gonna draw a line on the wrong side of the fabric ease and square to squares, I think are some of the hardest um, units to make in a quilt because I feel like they shift everywhere and I never feel like it comes out exact. So I'm gonna show you how I try to make mine exact, but generally I will use the foundation paper just because this is my least favorite unit to make because I've never really gotten it to come out perfectly. So here what we're gonna do is we're gonna do two corners first, two opposing corners. And what I generally do will put these down and I'm gonna use pins. You can also use the seam align glue. And what you wanna do is make sure that your square is on top of your other square exactly where it should be. You know, it's not a little bit off like that. That does make a huge difference. And I'm gonna pin three times. I have found that pinning three times gives me the best result. So what I'll do is two pins on the outside for each side, and then I'm gonna do one pin here on each, and I keep my pins out of the way of the line where I'm gonna sew. And this really keeps it so that nothing moves. So you're gonna stitch directly on these lines with an open toe foot. Now I'm gonna leave all of these pins in until I've sewn on both lines. And then when you look at it, you know, you shouldn't see the green from the back or the white from the front. I'm gonna trim a quarter inch away. Setting your seam just means putting your iron flat, pressing to one side. So now I have two corners done and I'm gonna add the last two corners. And I'm gonna do that same thing, lots and lots of pins. And if you guys have tips on how you make your square to square units, let us know in the comments and other people can read too, but this is the most difficult unit for me in any quilt. And I used to avoid any quilt with a square and a square because my blocks would come out so bad. But now that I've got the paper, I can do a better job. So um, stitch directly on those lines. We're going to trim a quarter inch away set the seam press to one side and this should be three and a half inches square so anytime I do a square and a square unit unless I am using my paper I'm gonna trim it down now the creative grits rulers have white lines that go through the ruler so I want that white line and these white lines to touch those points. I wanna make sure I stay a quarter inch away and I'm gonna trim this on all four sides. And that means that if it's oversized, which you can tell it slightly is, now it's exactly three and a half inches and I haven't chopped off any of the points. 
Now, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna make three using your tree print and one of your fabric F squares. Then you're gonna skip to step four. And these, fabric H, are your dark green. And what these are is your accent print. So you're gonna make a total of six. One from each print, one using the light green and one using the dark green. And that's really the hardest part of this quilt. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and start building our little rows within. So we're going to take this print and two fabric C rectangles. I'm gonna put these together. And here is where we can start doing multiple steps at one time. And because this unit is three and a half inches, there's enough space to where if you're pinning, you can keep everything out of the way. Now, of course, in this quilt, you can use different fabrics. You can move stuff around. I'm just following my pattern exactly to make it easy for me. So I'm using pins and that's step two. And I can put that right here. Now we're gonna look at step three and we're gonna put three fabric Ds and I'm gonna take this one and this one and put it there. And I'm gonna just pin this entire row just like I did on previous. And if you've never tried that, you can see how it works for you. It might be too much. The best thing about it is I find that I seam rip less because I don't accidentally put the wrong fabric with the wrong piece. So I'm just gonna build this whole row at one time. So this is like your middle row unit. The one we made before is your top, and then your bottom unit is fabric G's. And here I'm just gonna place this exactly like it is in the pattern and just pin this whole thing together. And then when we go to the sewing machine, all of these seams are quarter inch. I just use a quarter inch foot on my machine and sew all of them at one time. And then I'm gonna make sure when I go to press, I follow all of the arrows on my pressing, which basically they all go towards the squares or the rectangles and they all go away from your square and a square. So that makes it super easy. And so right here, I didn't chop any of them off, but if I left a little bit of green over here, I think it's fine. Mine came out pretty good this time, so I got lucky. And again, set your seam press toward your squares or rectangles. So we have finished page two. We're gonna move to page three, and I'm just gonna place the rows in the order they go. And so you can see our fabric placement. We kind of moved our fabrics away from each other. And what I'm gonna do is put this right sides together, pin in each intersection, sew with a quarter inch seam, and then I'll add this one after. I'll do them one at a time. And then here you just want to make sure you keep it the right direction instead of doing this because that would be kind of not looking like a tree. All your seams should nest so just pin. So one thing I would say is when I'm sewing this seam I always sew with just a regular quarter inch seam but some people will sew with a scant quarter inch which means just slightly inward and the reason why is you don't want to chop off these points so it kind of depends on how you sew and you'll see when you start sewing how it does but if you start chopping off the point you can move to a scant quarter inch and right here it looks like I need to sew in just a tiny tiny bit there's a little bit of gap right there so I'm gonna fix that by just stitching over it again. So I've just sewn in just slightly more and it came out perfect. So that is the top of the tree. We're gonna take our fabric B squares, draw a line from corner to corner on the wrong side. And these are really big corner squares, much bigger than normal. So definitely use a marking pen on these. And then you're gonna make sure your tree is facing 
this way and you're gonna place your squares just like this and I'm gonna pin. The key to this is the same as the square and a square, making sure this is square and pinning lots and lots. If you pin when you go to the sewing machine, right here you're sewing on the bias. So if you don't pin, your fabric is likely to shift and you'll get a less accurate result. So I'm gonna switch back to my foot that's an open toe. So here I'm going to look, and this triangle should be right there on that point. I actually don't think it really matters. So um, I actually got this to line up really perfectly, which is nice, but you don't really have to. I'm going to trim a quarter inch away, and we're going to press this toward the white. Now this one I would definitely set your seam. If you're not a seam setter, you have to on this because this right here is bias and if you don't it's likely to wave so we have page three done we're gonna move to page four and just add our fabric a rectangles to the left and the right and so we're gonna put those right sides together pin so with a quarter inch seam and we will be pretty much done Now from here, I am going to trim the top and the bottom. And what that's gonna do is just get it really nice and straight and get any of these excess threads off. And you can tell that as we're moving along with this quilt, it's getting easier and easier. So this row will also finish at nine and a half by 27 and a half. So we have row three done of the Evergreen Mystery Free Quilt Along. I'd love to see all of your trees, so share them with me on social media, and I'll see you next week for part four.